What's going on, everyone? I'm Agent Method. I'm a sound designer, producer, engineer. Recently, I've teamed up with Kilohertz and built a new preset pack for Faceplant called... And today, I'm super psyched to talk about it. We'll be doing a walkthrough of the patches in that demo track and their use cases. So future punk is this crossover genre idea I had a few years ago. And what I've been trying to develop is the next step in the realm of the pop punk emo scene from the early 2000s, which was really kind of my introduction into the whole music production realm at all. And it's just nice to see it come back around. It's awesome. But future punk brings those ideas forward and updates them with uh, this synth wave, uh, rhythm, melodic dubstep, future bass, those more modern EDM feels. So I'm really excited I got to partner with Kilohertz on this content bank. And I think it's just gonna be stupid fun and a whole new combination of inspiration for people to build on and build whatever future punk means to them. I really think you guys are gonna find really cool ideas in all of this, so let's get to the walkthrough. Okay, start off with basses. This is a really thick kind of synth wave bass type thing. Uh, you can give it some edge. It's really gridded up on the low end there. You can change its width and fatness. You can make it messier and add some verb should you want it. Moving right along. So this is the Drama Fiend bass, and this one you can do the same kind of thing, same kind of controls with closing stuff off. Opening it up. You can add some low end. Very gritty kind of vibe. And you can even do this weird thing that I just decided I thought was cool. It has this octave fifth drop, and then the, the fundamental that you're on. Just, I just thought it was a fun thing to just add some spice. And then the razor function over here is... Just gives it some real angry grit. And in context, it sounds like this. So that's pretty cool. All right, next up we've got the Voyager 8 bass. We'll play on words there. This bass is actually a wavetable from, I recorded from my Voyager 8 over here, this rack mounted synth. You have to go look it up. It's super rare, super cool synth. Very lucky to have it. I spent a lot of time recording stuff in and turning those into really cool wavetables to use. So you'll get a bunch of cool wavetables with this pack. But this bass sounds like this. So that's got a watery attack on it. You can turn it into a pluck and then lengthen it. You can slow down the opening of the filter. You had some subtle grit. Or the gravel, which was already on, but... Oh yeah, that's right. It's got a fifth in it. It's got a fifth built in, and you can take that out and make it just more angry with just this gravel. So that can be useful. Uh, width. Kind of takes on a different character when it's not so wide, which is cool. And this pattern knob over here, if you have this, uh, this length all the way up, does some really interesting kind of rhythmic elements. And I've macroed all a bunch of these things to the mod wheel. And, and a lot of my patches actually have like these functions in some easy capacity of just turning one knob. So you don't have to do a bunch of stuff to make something drastically different if you're trying to do some resampling or you're trying to just get a different sound very quickly. So that sounds like this. And that's controlled by one of these, one of these LFOs. Uh, this one, and you can just change that to whatever you want. Just come in here and just give it a hold, a hold out in the middle. I mean, why not? So all very modular. You can totally make it your own, which was my goal with all of these patches that I have is just mangle them into whatever you need them to be. If just the mod wheel isn't doing it for you, the macros come down here and screw with the LFOs. You're bound to find something you like. And that based in context sounds like this. Very cool. 
starting off here with this very self-explanatory uh, effect. This one may have one application only. It's four separate oscillators, each running in an individual word, uh, so I could maximize the resolution for each word. And it says this is Future Punk. With this, you can turn on some combs. And turn on the Raid Boss. Makes it quite a bit uglier. Uh, you can fuck it up. But the fuck up knob, there's a few fuck up knobs across many of these patches. It may say randomize, but the fuck up is also acceptable. It basically just kind of randomizes things to give you some cool glitchy effects in, in many of these kinds of patches. <laughs> this patch is rather uh, system heavy. Uh, my computer uh, does not love it, but it's cool nonetheless. So this next patch is called Robit 1. You can make it do all kinds of cool stuff. You can widen it up. Give it some more squares. Throw in a notch filter. Combs. And some middle flips. That's always a cool, fun feature. And it's even got some shifting here, so you can kind of change the timbre a bit if you want to change it over time or resample for different feel for a different part of the bass. <laughs> So that's pretty cool. You can get a bunch of different feels just out of one bass. The mod wheel is the easy knob, effectively. And come down here to change the pattern. Just one of these LFOs, just, just hop in here and make it your own. So this next patch is called Rhythm Metal, and it's kind of like a wonky, screechy, rhythm -y bass kind of thing. And uh, these kinds of basses, at least the way I've made them in this pack, benefit a ton from you spending some time doing some automation, as you can see here. So that's pretty cool. Or you can do the easy knob. Just kind of add some constant combs. Oh, there's a fuck up knob on this one too. Let's see what that does. <laughs> and you can turn on some of the combs to be random as well. make it talk doing that. So there's a lot of cool functions with this one. And in context, that one sounds like this. Alright, this one is called a uh, Rhythm Laser Bubble. Here's the vibe for this one. This is some disperser, some packed up effects and snap heaps. You just get it straight up talk the whole time. With the with the mod wheel. This one you gotta automate just like the last one just to get the best use out of it. Uh, you can turn up this whistle and make it... Make it scream. Uh, the next one's called Marching Flow. And like the rest of them, this has a an easy mod wheel. Which does a bunch of stuff for you, but also automation never hurts. You can slow it down. It's got a random knob as well that cycles through the shifting of the wavetable in this case. So that you can kind of just automatically get new timbres as you program whatever LFO shape that you want for the rhythm you want it to make. And with some post-processing and context, that sounds like this. So next up is the Dark Trooper growl bass. This one's really nasty. That's just such a cool sound. It can do a ton as well. Bunch of automation stuff you should do to these macros to really get them to shine for you. The mod wheel again, kind of your easy. Just does a bunch of stuff. Change the position of the notch filter. And of course your chaos knob. You can really just go nuts on that one. This one is Robit 2. This has some, a lot of the same functions. You can add some squares. That kind of grid it up. You can change the notch position. Change the width. So this one is magnet rail. Uh, it's got a lot of the same functions. The whole mod wheel thing. It's got some stuttering effects. Add some more dimension. 
widen it up, shift the wave table around, a lot of the same functions. I think you're seeing the pattern here, just to give you as much functionality and shifting the sound as possible very quickly. And that's the first drop. So in context, all those things together sound like this. <laughs> Right along to the second drop, we have the shards growl bass. It's pretty nasty, and it's a cool vibe. Mod wheel does a bunch of stuff real quickly. Same thing here, you can shift the wavetable around, add some width, some bending to the wavetable, some combs, some amplitude modulation, really grid it up, and some pitch diving so that you don't have to automate that. Next up is the Lambda Alarm. So this has got a lot of the same things, some shifting, some FM, some sub, width, combs, some mid stuttering, and then of course the mod wheel to make all that stuff happen much easier. This one's called Just a Total Mess. Ah, uh, yes. Your classic yoy. This one actually isn't a yoy outrightly. This one's actually a growl as well, but it just has the capacity to morph into that. Here's without the uh, talking. Take the notch down, add some width, add some combs, and then fuck it up. Every time you hit it, it's a different thing. So if you like something, you better print it. <laughs> It's like a talking spaceship. This one is Dot Matrix, mod wheel making things easy. You can open it up. Combs. Flangers, a little different. Also does some uh, stereo width there, and then just some stuttering at the beginning. This one's called Chrome. A lot of functionality with that one. Let's got some flangin. This one, I believe, the shift of the wavetable is happening automatically. Or no, it's yeah, that's right here through the knob. Turn it back into talking. This one is called Jumpy Munchkin. It's kind of a watery, shrill sound. And a random fuckery knob. This one's called Dimondium. It's got a lot of the same features. Combs, extra grind. Some disperser. This one is called Noise Lion. It's got the easy knob. More dimension. Stutter all of it. Kind of a grindy stutter. This is a notch. And your fuck up knob. This one is called Cheap Plastic Toy. A lot of the same functions as the rest of them, but you can change a few more things about the tonality, like hollow and warm. Basically takes away and adds like a second harmonic. Got some FM. Combs. This one's real classic. Uh, you can either make it super clean or more robotic. That's the difference between a saw and a square wave. You can change the formant, so make it higher or lower. And some notch. And sore throat adds some white noise to give it more of a hoarse sound. Versus this. Much cleaner. Uh, you can actually add a bass note or take it out completely. Just make it more of a vocal or make it more of a bass. And some room reverb. Uh, this one is called Squish Crystal. I don't know why. <laughs> Much like all the rest of them. Got some wavetable shifting. Some amplitude modulation that functions as widening. 
You can open it up. So it stays more grindy the whole time. Some combs. Make it harsher. And kind of stutter the beginning. Which is always a fun way to add some difference. And that pretty much covers the second drop. In context, that sounds like this. kind of vamp part of the end of the song also has some growls in it, so we'll go through that. cool so these are guitars and they're real uh, played through the thu amp from uh, overloud and slate digital but if you don't have a guitar or don't know how to play a guitar or if you want to just add more guitar layers to an already existing guitar whether strumming or palm muting or something like that i've got some patches in here for just that kind of a thing these are particularly processor heavy. Uh, so if they don't work on your system, fear not. I have a light version in the extras folder, these guitar ones in here. So it shouldn't be quite as heavy on the system, but it will lack some of its features. Anyways, these are the future palm mutes and you can actually take these and change it from the neck to the bridge. These are actually all been turned into wavetables, so they actually trigger in time with whatever your tempo of your session is. So you'll always have in time palm mutes. It's got some FM grit. So you can loosen up the muting of the palm mute. Or tighten it up. What's really cool about this is that all that distortion is actually going through that EQ and kind of creating that amp sound. You can add some room to it. Or if you just want to kind of mangle it with this knob here, you can really just do some crazy stuff. That was a palm mute at the beginning of that journey. So you can really mangle sounds into other stuff with this pack, which is what I love. I love being able to do that. Next up are some good old guitar strums. Same concept, neck bridge, some width. You can even just increase or decrease the amount of the drive of the amp. Uh, same thing, kind of run through that distorted, 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 ran through the EQ curve, kind of gives it that amp vibe. Some FM, some dimension, same kind of stuff as the, as the palm mutes, really. This one's got the knob as well. And in context with the rest of the instrumentation sounds like this. Skip to this half. And this part. So there you go. Polysynths, leads, got all kinds of stuff in here for you to mess around with. This one is called Polycity 84. It's that opening sound you hear in the beginning. That very 80s sort of synth wave, vapor wavy kind of video gamey saws. Some intensity. Changes just the piercingness of that filter. You can really wobble it. So much wobble. Close it off a little bit with the open knob or open it up. 
turn it into more of a pluck. A lot of these poly synths and plucks and all this stuff, they can go back and forth. One can be a pluck and be a poly, or it can, you can change it and just make it whatever you want it to be. Uh, this one is called Squalids. It's kind of a plucky, leady sound. Add some reverb. Add some delay. Widen up, as you can see, everything's moving on its own. Kind of give us some throatiness with this AM here. Change the sync there and make it screech. Uh, this one is called ISO E Super. That was lovely. You change the length. Shut the filter down. Take some voices away. Make it a little more sterile. Take some reverb and delay down. Take it out of the sky and put it on the ground. Or, you know, take it all the way back to the sky again. This one is called Background Plucks, and uh, it's probably pretty self-explanatory, really. You can play it more like a pluck, or kind of play and hold. It'll give you some, some warbles. Open it up. Some width. Some delay. Some tonal shift. Right there, I think sounds the best. Make the pitch wobble even more. Or very little. Uh, this one's called Pocket Tanks. It's kind of a lead sound. If you remember the game, Pocket Tanks, congratulations, you are awesome. Add some delay. Ducking. The ducking is actually interesting because the ducking starts at the beginning of every note, so you can make it duck a whole lot just depending on how many notes you're hitting. So you can almost kind of create like a ghost kick effect. Make it wobble a whole lot. And this one's got the mod wheel starts up because it's a low pass filter and you can filter it down. So I just did that to make it logically make sense. Uh, and you can also change its rise and pitch length. This, the thing about this patch is that it rises and falls when you press on and off a key. This pitch length knob here will, will change how it rises and falls and how long it takes to recover. You can make the length of the rise and fall of the pitch of this one longer as you take it to the left. I think that does it for the synths. Last but certainly not least are some drums and some effects. So this one is chest kick. Nice and hefty. Some options here. We've got some wide distortion. It's got a nice thump to it. Adds a little more width and, and punch. Make it a little more roomy like you're on a stage. And then some actual stage verb. And then some mids here if you want to like... If you like your kick to be a little more... Have more of a body. And some rumble here. And these are all note matched, so if you want to kick in a certain key, you got it. This one is called Real Snare. One time it was a real snare. It is now a wavetable. So what do we got? We got some widen. Uh, some snap and punch. That really makes a huge difference in the sound. 
widen it out a little more rattle on the bottom end and this knob is called why this why this indeed i, I don't know digitize if you want to bit crush it and verb and the verb is cool because it's enveloped so however long you hold down a note is how long the reverb lasts or you can you can really hold it down for longer until it dies, kind of giving you like a gated 80s verb that you can gate to whatever length you want. And the mod wheel here will take it from zero to hero real quick. Yeah. This one is just called snare, kind of your run of the mill dubstep snare, kind of a long tail. You can add the rattle in or take it out completely, which I don't know why you'd want it completely gone, but you have the option. You can make the rattle wider to give the snare stereo space. You can also do the same thing for the, the note. So take the whole thing wide. You can increase the note length. If you like your note to be a little bit longer, I personally prefer a short note. And then smash and bright makes a big difference. Distortion always sells it. And like the other snare, it's got some 80s gated verb. That plays as long as you hold down, you know, a key. And we got some toms here. You can increase the amount of the note that you're hearing. More low end effectively. Increase the attack. More top end effectively. And panning, make sure it pans left to right. You know, like drummer's perspective. Because that's the only perspective that matters. This 80s verb also gates, depending on how long you're holding the note. Very last, but definitely not least, is the bubbly metal down sweep. And this is a really cool transition effect. In typical fashion, I believe the mod wheel here really changes it. Otherwise, it's pretty bland, but strange. Some verb. With some combing and flanging. Crazy combs. And also, you can change the squares. Which effectively just changes the tonality of what you're hearing. And in context, here are the effects. And I think that's it for drums and effects. Well, uh, that wraps it up, really. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a thing or two. There are obviously more presets than the ones we went over, 60 to be precise. And I even omitted a bunch I used because this walkthrough would be fucking two hours long and we don't got that kind of time. So I'm gonna put this track out on SoundCloud and Spotify and whatnot. Uh, so look for that in the coming days. While well, you're over there on Spotify, actually. I've already made quite a few covers in this genre to kind of help define the walls of the box of the genre so that you all can go break them down with your own creations. Through creation comes destruction comes creation. Such is the nature of the universe. But also, I've started a uh, subreddit for this uh, called, you know, r slash future punk music and I'll link it in the description and please join in post what you're making I would love to see it I would, I would love to see how each one of you is making this idea uh, evolve so go head over to Killa Hearts pick up Faceplant in the content bank and go make some future punk